Hi, Brian Bennett is coming to you again. Um, if you notice the last two or three chapters, I have the same shirt on. And I was told, do me a favor, change your shirt so it looks like a different day. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to continue to read the book because we are almost, we are at the most important part of the book, which is called the healing thought process. And it's just, it just feels right. And I'm going to go and I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. So what I'm going to do, it starts off with a little, little, a uh, couple paragraphs and then it gets into the healing thought process. So I can't let this video be too long, but because apparently my team can't draw it out of my phone and put it on all the um, necessary social sites. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit a couple and then I'm going to talk as I go. And I don't know how many of these small videos it'll take, but let's see where we go. So we are now in chapter 19, which is called the toolbox. And it's the healing thought process. And this is what I use to this very day. The toolbox. You gain strength, courage, and confidence by every experience in which you really stop to look fear in the face. You are able to say to yourself, I have lived through this horror. I can take the next thing that comes along. You must do the thing you think you cannot do. Eleanor Roosevelt. As a mechanic working in my father's blow molding shop, I became familiar with and learned to respect many different tools and what they could do. They were my lifeline. If a machine went down, I meant I was losing money. And it would, had to be repaired and returned to operation as fast as possible. Having access to the right tool in my toolkit and knowing how to use it could have saved minutes, hours, and even days of headaches and risk to the health of the company a constant source of intense anxiety. Throughout this book, I have made mention of using tools for my toolbox to treat my own anxiety and panic attacks. The tools I use are quite similar to the tools I might use to repair a poorly operating machine. In any given crisis, I need to know what tools I have available, and I need to know how to use them to fix the problem. And knowing that a problem could arise at any time, I had to be vigilant and ready. And this is a quote. In the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. Albert Einstein. First step in my toolbox was I titled, Learn to Drop Your Armor. In theory, armor exists to protect you. It's something to wear and hide behind when an enemy attacks. The first truth you must realize and accept is that the whole healing and thought process surrounding anxiety and panic attacks will not kill you. Therefore, raising your armor to fight the thing is not the answer, and the sense of security your armor provides is a false one. Remember, what good can armor do when fighting yourself? Put down your shield and your sword and allow the fear to come to you. Feel the fear. It took me 35 years to realize that this fear, no matter how terrible and intense it might become, was not able to kill me. I tested myself over and over and over again, believing that it could become worse and lead to my eventual death. But no matter how close I came to a level 10, I would never quite reach it. I could not die from it. Once you accept that these attacks are survivable, you are well on your way to recovery. Very quickly, learn to drop your armor. This, again, is the um, culmin cul culmination of all that I've learned in my 30 35 years of reading, of going through, experiencing, and so on and so forth. And as simple as it sounds, learn to drop your armor. Every once in a while, when I do get that panic-stricken feeling, like I talk about in the book, and I talk within my talks, and even when I go to do a talk, I am still very nervous, very uncomfortable. But I, this is one of the things, okay, it's only anxiety. Now I know what it's called. It's only panic. It's only anxiety. You've lived through thousands of episodes. Let it come. Let it deal with it. It's going to go fluctuate from a 3 to a 5 to a 7 to a 9 to whatever it's going to be. But learn not to fight it. And once you learn not to fight it, once you learn to let it come, it's only anxiety. 
you don't give it legs. You don't water it. You don't man it doesn't manifest into all these horrible thoughts. It's only anxiety. Drop your armor. Second part of the toolbox. Say the words, nobody's coming. And this is a very hard but very interesting thing to do. I wish I could remember where I first read the words, nobody's coming. Because these two simple words are not only very true, but have been life-changing. When I was alone on my boat, in the shower, or in an elevator, why would I always wish somebody else would be there with me? Why did I want them sitting in the car with me or standing near me in the elevator? The reason was simple. If something happened, which of course it never did, there would be someone there to be ready to be available for help. I can always imagine the very worst, passing out, choking to death, a heart attack, breathing difficulty, going crazy, even killing myself. It took me years to come to the realization that I had never actually been in a situation bad enough where I needed the other person to make the call. You will learn and eventually come to appreciate that you have both the will and the power to let that fear come to you. Let it pass through you. Let it leave you. You do not need anyone else. Nobody's coming, and that's a wonderful thing because the healing thought process doesn't start with them. It starts with you. What more to say than that? Who else are you going to rely on than you? Okay? Easy to say. Trust. This built book is built on trust. Okay? Every situation, and I've mentioned many of them in my book, every single situation I've been through, I always was looking for somebody, for a hospital sign, for somebody to help, for some human contact, whatever it might be. But really, what was really the problem here? There really wasn't a problem. It was me. It was my thoughts. And then you might say, yeah, but my thoughts will spiral out of control until what? What's really going to happen? Your heart's going to beat faster. You're going to be sweaty. You're not going to kill yourself. You're not going crazy and you're not going insane. So nobody's coming. Oh, yeah, nobody's coming. All right. So nobody's coming. I can deal with this. It's not Joe Tough Guy. In fact, it's just the opposite. Be be sensitive to yourself. Talk nice to yourself. Nobody's coming. Nobody's coming, Brian. Drop your armor. It's only fear. It's only anxiety. Let it come. Let it flow. Number three in the toolbox. Visualize good, not bad. I'm not the first person to advocate positive visualization visualization and I've come to appreciate that the reason it's so popular is because it really does work every time I was alone I would think about and visualize all the bad things that were about to happen to me why why on God's green earth would someone want to think about bad things happening to them but for some reason that's precisely what I did and it took a long time for me to realize that I was bringing these thoughts on by myself it might sound a tad corny but just telling yourself, out loud if you need to, that it's time to heal can matter. Simply close your eyes and picture yourself placing a small bandage over your bad thought. There's another simple trick that worked well for me, too. I would wrap a rubber band around my wrist, and each time I realized I was having a bad thought, I would snap the rubber band hard enough to inflict a little pain, but not so hard to break the skin. You might need a big box of rubber bands the first week. You'll be amazed at the number of bad thoughts you experience in a day. What constitutes a bad thought? Usually they come in the form of a question intended to enhance your insecurity. What if? How long will this take? Will I be alone? How many people will be there? How can I get out of this? Now, admittedly, these are the easy ones. When you really stop to think about it, and again, I know this from years of experience, it is possible to have 20, 30, 40, even 50 of these thoughts in a minute. With so many negative thoughts flying around your mind, it becomes easy to see why you believe you could scare yourself to death. It's like getting yourself caught up in a swarm of those little black flies known as noceums. First couple of bites irritate you, but after about 50, the bites feel like they're coming from horse flies. You feel like you can't take it anymore. You think you will be devoured alive, and you want to scream. Another technique is to keep a written record of all your bad thoughts for a day, breaking them down into hours and minutes. This will help you see how these thoughts have fed the roots of your anxiety tree and helped it grow. The total number of these thoughts will astound you, and it's almost incomprehensible to think 
about the total number of bad thoughts you've had in your lifetime. I'm sure you never let anyone talk to you the way you talk to yourself. Changing your thought process in, in this way is extremely hard to do, and it won't happen quickly. But you've taken advice from an expert here. On someone who has been through this and come out the other side, you can and will, too. Let it come. You don't need anyone to help you. Patience is the key to contentment, Mohammed. Again, sounds simple. I've been doing it and it works. Talk to yourself the way you want people to talk to you. Visualize good, not bad. Why are you creating these thoughts? And please, as I mentioned before, I am not a clinician. I'm an expert. I've been through it. So there's nothing you're going to tell me that I haven't heard or been through myself. And I'm telling you, if you write these tools on a piece of paper, if you take this chapter, rip it out of the book, make copies, if there's one sentence, if there's one word, if there's one what have you that helps you, then use it. I have a piece of paper. I'm going to show it for you. I had a talk the other day, and I actually do it out loud. This is what I read before I go on a plane. Man is not worried by real problems as much as imagined anxieties about real problems. Epictetus. Nobody's coming. Anxiety lives in the future. Be strong enough not to fight. Sometimes all you need is 20 seconds of insane courage and your whole life could change. Here it is. 55 years old. 55 years old, I'm showing you, this is my Xanax, these are my pills, this is my beer before I get on a plane, this is it. This goes in here and comes out here. I, I'm going to again tell you, I'm an expert, I'm not reading from a medical diary, I'm telling you, these words work. Don't yeah but me and don't say what if. They work. Drop your armor. Let it come. Positive self-talk. Read these words. It works. I'm still on the healing thought process. I'm still in my toolbox. But I'm going to move to another video because I'm at 13 minutes. And I feel I should do that. Okay? Let that digest. If you have to, please play this video over and over and over again. And remember, I still use it. It works. It works. I'm telling you. Trust me. Visualize. Nobody's coming. And drop your armor. Start there. Good luck. God bless. I'll talk to you soon.